<laughs> hey, the Atlanta Hawks losers, 118 to 88 in game four. So they get, uh, they get swept by the Cavs. Uh, Mike Budenholzer was the coach of the year uh, in the NBA, but it's got to be tough uh, to absorb a sweep in the Eastern Conference final. D.A. had a chance to talk to him. Bud, every playoff series can go either way at the start. What ultimately do you think decided this one? Well, you know, they're the better team at the end of the day. You know, I think um, the way they shot the three-pointer, the way they um, attacked the offensive glass, and I think LeBron James is playing at a high level, and, you know, they're playing well off of him and defensively. Um, you know, I think they're just they're playing very well, and I don't, I don't think we were at our best, so give them a ton of credit, and congratulations to Cleveland and Coach Blatt and all their players and the organization. They're just better. With this historic season that you've had, what is the thing about which you are most proud this season? Well, right now we're just thinking about the playoffs and tonight, and tonight was really hard. And, um, you know, but I think we talked about how much we've learned and how much we've grown during the playoffs. I think tomorrow or the next day we'll reflect on the season. And, you know, obviously there's a lot of positives, but, you know, for our players right now, I think we're just thinking about, you know, even on a night like tonight, you learn and you grow and we'll be better going forward. Your, your old boss, Coach Popovich, used to always say, nights when, when there are losses, let's just go have a bottle of wine and <laughs> move on. Is that the plan? <laughs> yeah, I think a, a bottle of wine and a dinner. And, you know, um, I think that, you know, you give them credit and life goes on. And, you know, we'll find out or we'll figure out a way to get better going forward. But thanks for everything. Congratulations on a great season. All right. Thanks, David. All right, back to you. 60 and 22. Uh, for the Atlanta Hawks, best record in the Eastern Conference. Had four All-Stars on that squad. Uh, Paul Millsap's free agent, so was Damari Carroll. Um, what do you do if you're the Hawks? Um, and how do you get over the hump? You learn from this. Before you succeed, you must first learn to fail. You know, nobody expected them to go this far. They went this far, but we knew it was going to be a tough task for them to win. You know, All year, we asked who the best team was. Nobody ever said Atlanta. You got on us many times. We knew it was Chicago or Cleveland. It's a tough task. But, you know, they now have the blueprint to win a lot of games. I still think they're one or two pieces away. You know, Kenny, Kenny made this point uh, yesterday. The difference between a good player and a great player is the attitude. And no one guy on the team has the attitude to take that extra shot. You know, they play good team ball. But, you know, you gotta have, you got to have a, a, a one-two punch that you can rely on. They need to get bigger. They're too small. You see, the they, they're a bad, bad rebounding team. That's why Thompson just dominated them. Uh, they got to get b bigger. That's my the number one priority I would put out there. Ernie, let's be realistic. I'm not going to say anything bad about the Hawks, but I don't think they would have beat Washington with, with a healthy John Wall. And I don't think they would have beat Chicago or Cleveland. And Cleveland, I'm not sure Cleveland would have beat Chicago, if Paul Gasol don't get hurt. See, they had the best record, but they were probably the fourth best team in the conference. Do they have to – does this team need a star? Does yes. this team need a yes. guy that you can say, you're going to win a game for us today? Yes. Yes, every team needs that. Every team well, needs that. Well, either you – Kenny, yes, no, yes, stop I'm it. I'm saying there's a possibility that they might have one in Jeff T. You know, there's a possibility. But I, I, the, first, the first thing that they have to address – is size, and like Charles says. I think that's the first issue. Now, if in size, does that come a superstar? Possibly. But they, they are too small. Tristan Thompson looked like Will Chamberlain on the, on the offensive and defensive yeah, board. But, yeah, but, and, you know, he's not that big. You know, he's 6'7". He's just out hustling. No, Moscow. No, no, no. No. He, he, he's 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, 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 no, that, but no. That's, that's the point. Yeah. They can't keep uh, – Tristan Thompson is really an undersized power forward. They can't keep him off the boards. Can you okay, imagine? but y'all talking like the guy 7'3", 350 no, pounds, he's 6'8". I know, but they're just team, hustle. But I'm yeah. saying, I don't know if, no, they hard-working team. They won six a game. They're just too small, Shaq, because they're at such a, because Cleveland got two big guys. Moskov is big. He was doing his thing down there. And Thompson, they could not keep him off the offensive even, even board. Even tonight, Shaq, and I, you know, I'm, we're not, I'm not a big stat guy, but 56 to 39 on the rebounds. Like, you just got, you can't rebound. But that was their thing all year. Right. And that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's all year. So. Yeah, it was like, they got out-rebounded out the Hawks did by 51 in the, in the series. So. Yeah.